Hi guys, welcome back. My name is Rachel and I'm excited to do this quarter four reset. I cannot believe the year is coming to a close. We still have three months to go, but time has really flown by this year and I'm excited to go over my goals, talk about the best purchases I've made in quarter three. I'm also gonna go over my favorite books that I've read, my shows that I'm watching, and just kind of give an overview of what the vibe is gonna be for quarter four. So make sure you subscribe if you haven't already and let's dive right in let me get my smoothie something that i've discovered in quarter three is that i'm obsessed with smoothies specifically banana peanut butter chocolate protein smoothies like i'm drinking literally one right now so let me get situated one second please okay so first things first let's go over our 2022 goals that we set at the very beginning of this year and let's see how we are doing i stopped doing monthly goals and I focused solely on yearly and bi-yearly goals. They just work better for me, but there's nothing wrong with setting monthly goals if that's what works for you. So the first goal we have is to enjoy cooking more and to cook more. So not only to cook more, but also to find a way to enjoy it and integrate it as part of my routine. And I can successfully say that quarter three has been the best quarter this year where I've done that. Truly, I think like a light switch went off in my brain and I was like, you know what, Rachel, like it's time to grow up. It's time to start cooking, learn how to make some things, some healthy things specifically. And I'm really proud to say that I've been cooking about three meals a week. I've really been consistent and I'm excited to say that I am on track with this goal. I do wanna to continue to make progress in quarter four. The next goal is to move or exercise five times a week on average. Again, if you've been watching, starting this year, I was not reaching any of these goals, but over time and with consistency and dedication, I am proud to say that I have, for the most part, stuck to this goal of at least five movements a week. And recently, I went even further to break down what are those five exercises that I'm going to do each week. So I came up with this and I've been doing it for about two weeks now, so it's still very new to me. But basically, I wanna do at least one leg day a week, which is like squatting, deadlifting, lunging. I wanna do one upper body weightlifting a week, which is like biceps, chest, back. I normally do this with a AJ, I'll just go along with whatever he's doing that day. The third thing is I want to go on at least one long walk every single week. And for me personally, that's two miles or more. I want to do at least one session of yoga or stretching to help with not only with a flexibility, but also stress and anxiety. I tend to be more on the anxious side. So that's been really helping me. And then lastly, I want to do at least one Pilates workout, whether that's at home or signing up for a class. You guys know I've been doing at home Pilates and I've been loving it. So I'm thinking after we get back from our upcoming vacation that I will probably sign up for that because I I've just wanted to try it. Next goal. Save up for a car with my YouTube money. I'm like 95% of the way there. It took a long time to save up because I do want to put as much down as possible, if not fully buy it in cash. So that's been taking me a while and I've accepted the fact that I'm not gonna get a car this year and I'm totally okay with that because I really don't need one. I currently drive a Hyundai Veloster and it's perfectly fine. So that's just something I'll probably buy next year, but I'm glad that I have the cash that I need to make that purchase whenever I'm ready. Hit 100,000 on YouTube. We are so close, you guys. I'm filming this a few days before September is over. So as of today, we've gained approximately 10,000 subscribers in quarter three. And I was looking back at quarter two, we gained 11,100 subscribers. So if that trend continues, which I'm hoping that it does, we should definitely hit 100,000 by the end of the year. That would be amazing. If you guys subscribe, that would mean so much to me. Okay, the next one is to learn contentment. Now, I feel like I've been kind of forced Forced to learn this um, going through our TTC journey we are trying to conceive for six months now so that's kind of forced me to learn how to be content in my life where it's at and not always be looking for the next step the next thing I totally thought I would be pregnant by now and I'm not so that's kind of forced me to reflect and get closer to God and just kind of learn how to be content and I totally think that it's a good thing that I'm going through this process because I think it's an important lesson that I really need, that I needed and continue to need to grow in. Does that make sense? I mean, it's been hard. It's been really hard if you've been, uh, I have a few videos that I'll link if you wanna like see that journey, but 
it's this ongoing journey and it's it's hard but it's good it's good and hard read one self-help book per month quarter one and two i've been really good at this quarter three i completely stopped i've kind of shifted more towards fiction and thrillers and i'll talk about all the books i've been loving so i definitely need to get back on track with that learn how to do makeup i haven't made any progress in quarter three it hasn't been a priority for me so maybe i'll shift my focus to that since i kind of reached some of the other goals i can focus on these last few goals that i need to work on make our backyard a paradise this is coming closer and closer. We just put the roof on the deck. We're, we're building a deck in the backyard. We just put the roof on. We have like a few screws to put in. We have the waterproofing to put on top and then it'll be done. So this will definitely be reached by the end of the year. Now, after that, we still need to replace the fence, which is going to be like $5,000. So I'd love to get that done by the end of the year, but it is such a big investment. So we will see. Go on an international trip. We are doing that. This uh, actually in two days from now, we're going on a cruise to Mexico and Honduras. And I'm so excited. A cruise is such a good way to have a vacation for so cheap. And I'll go over how much the cruise costed us because it, we got it for a steal and it's on Royal Caribbean, which is literally like the best cruise line. And my last goal that I had put on at the end of quarter three was to do my devotion at least five times per week. And I've definitely been hitting that goal. I've been doing my devotion every single morning. I would say like six out of seven mornings. Okay, and that being said, I have two additional goals that I'm going to write down on my yearly goals. The first one is to drink 64 ounces of water. And the way I've been trying to reach this goal is when I first wake up in the morning, I will chug a glass of water. I guess Yes, it's probably eight ounces and then I have my Stanley cup which is like 40 ounces so right there I'm getting about 50 ounces and then through smoothies and foods and like additional sips of water I think that I can definitely get to 64. A lot of you guys are probably like 64 is not even a lot but for me that's a lot like when I first got my Stanley cup I was struggling to finish that and that's 40 ounces. Okay, and my last goal is that I want to substitute completely my morning coffee for a hot matcha. I've been doing this every couple of days, but I want to get to the point where I'm only drinking matcha because I figured if you're going to be drinking something every day, why not make it something that's beneficial for your health, right? And yeah, coffee does have some health benefits, but in the sake of being healthy and going on this trying to conceive journey, I'm going to give it a try. I'm currently loving the peak matcha i talked about it in a recent video and it also has like l-theanine in it which supports fertility and yeah i don't know i'm just gonna give it a try i think it's a little bit healthier and i can probably uh, be less addicted to caffeine you guys know i'm not big on budgeting i started the year off budgeting almost every single dollar and then i just kind of faded away from doing that it's just not me it's a lot of work but i did discover this new app well it's not new people have been using it for a long time but it's new to me it's called Clio and this is seriously the best budgeting app in the world I was talking to Anna about it last night and I do have the privilege of working with them in today's video and it's literally the perfect fit because this app makes budgeting fun <laughs> you can literally talk to it there's like a they call it Clio it's like a robot you can like type in the chat and be like roast me Clio and it'll tell you like like hey dummy you spent $749 on an Apple watch what are you thinking and it's just the funniest thing ever. So you link your account and it'll pull up. Like you can type in bills into the chat and it'll pop up like what bills are coming up. Some of the things it says literally had me dying. I was cracking up on the couch by myself when I first signed up. It's so fun. So it's a money app that has your back and helps you make financial decisions that are good for you. So it tells you how much you're saving. It helps you set goals if you want to. It'll tell you how much money you received, like income, money, in versus money out in a very easy to see way it'll tell you like hey last month you spent five hundred dollars on food and it'll you'll be able to adjust your budget and be like okay let me decrease that to 450 and i personally like the chat i think it's the funniest thing ever you can also do hype me cleo so it's got like a hype mode and a roast mode the roast mode will be like like i said hey dummy you spent xyz like what are you thinking like do better uh, and then hype me mode will be like you're doing so good you spent way less this month than last month it'll be like positive reinforcement versus like funny roasting things it's it's so funny for example this may seem like a small thing but Cleo helped me realize that I'm spending 
spending a lot of money on Apple. So I have to figure out what is this Apple chart? What are these Apple charges that are coming out of my account every single day? And then I also had like a 33 cent bank charge, which is not a lot again, but it, these are charges that I had no idea about because like I said, I'm not the type of person to be sitting there analyzing my statements every month. It's just not me. It definitely has a sense of humor, but it's not like shaming you for spending money and it recognizes any progress that you do make. So with Clio, any progress is good progress. And what sets Clio apart from other apps is number one, it's not boring. Like I look, I genuinely look forward to opening the app because I, if I need a good laugh or I need to like quickly ask it a question, it's unique tone of voice speaks with you, not at you. It's literally hyping you up and like it feels like it's a person talking to me. So make sure to click the link in my description and download Clio for completely free, costs you nothing, and you can have a laugh and enjoy budgeting. All right, so let's go over our biggest purchases that we made in quarter three. Something really exciting is that I purchased the new Apple Watch Series 8. It should be coming today. I'm so excited, but that was a big purchase. $749, I got this stainless steel gold one. So I'll show you guys that when it comes in. I'm so excited because it does have ovulation tracking or it has temperature tracking, it says. So I'm gonna be testing that out and let you, letting you guys know if it's accurate because I do take my temperature every morning. Next, we got a new dishwasher that was $700 plus the maintenance plan. Next, I got my wisdom teeth removed. That was a big purchase. That was about $2,000. You guys know how I feel about wisdom teeth, but that was not a purchase I was looking forward to. Next, we went to North Carolina. Luckily, housing, we didn't have to pay for housing or anything like that. We just had to pay for gas and food. So I didn't do the math, but I assume it was like at least $500 on food and excursions and things like that. And gas was like a lot. Of course, we booked the cruise that we're going on. That was $1,000. Okay, and we got a balcony room. You guys will see the vlog. Royal Caribbean, Allure of the Seas, one of the biggest ships in the world. Balcony room for six nights, international cruise, $1,000. Okay, and here's my tip for you guys if you're gonna be booking a cruise. First of all, only book with Royal Caribbean. Don't even bother with the other cruise lines. Royal is the best, okay? Let's just leave it at that. Next, you need to look at all of the dates. So for this specific date that we're going on, which is September 25th to October 1st, for some reason, this cruise was half the price of the other cruises. So even though it's the same place, same ship, just look at all of the dates and book ahead so you can get the cheapest date. Make sure you put your PTO request in. But that is my little life hack for you. $1,000 balcony room, and that's for two people. So that's the total price. All food is included, amazing main dining selections at night, like literally lobster, unlimited food. If you do drink a lot of alcohol, you have to purchase that as an additional package, but we don't, so we save lots of money. And lastly, in terms of big purchases, was additional supplies for the deck. We paid about $400 in quarter three to get the roofing materials, which was like plywood, screws, things like that. I mean, this is a lot of money. I think the wisdom teeth definitely screwed me over. And the Apple Watch was kind of like an impulsive uh, purchase. As soon as I heard they do temperature tracking, I immediately purchased it. <laughs> All right, next let's go over the best purchases that I've made in quarter three, in quarter three, quarter three. Uh, the first thing is this green shirt that I'm wearing right now. This is from Amazon. And what I like about this, number one, is that it's cheap. Number two, it comes in multiple colors. I just have been really into little shirts that I can throw over, wear like this, throw around my waist. It's just super good for living in a warm area. We live in Florida, so heavier jackets are just not, not the vibe, especially like even in the winter. Also from Amazon, this green checkered bathing suit is super flattering. I love the cut. It's like, it doesn't reveal too much skin on the top or the bottom, which I love. And I love these two together. I'll definitely be wearing this on the cruise such a good amazon find and again they have different colors and variations in this style also from amazon i got a one inch barrel this is from hot tools i already have the one and a half inch which is quite thick but ever since i cut my hair i've realized as you can see like in this picture 
because I have shorter hair, the one and a half inch barrel only gives me like one curl by the time it's done. So I've really been enjoying a smaller barrel. This is a one inch, it's like 30 bucks. It works great and it's perfect for shorter hair. I don't know why it took me so long to do this. Also, I need to get my roots done, like my highlights, like you see how grown out they are. I haven't gotten it done since I think March. Okay, next up we have our Converse. Such a basic purchase, but also such a necessity. I love this because I really enjoy wearing flat shoes when doing um, weightlifting, especially on leg day. So that's been great for that. And also it doubles as like a fashion shoe. So I can wear it like with this outfit or with jeans. Um, it was only about $60. So definitely a good staple piece for your wardrobe. Next up, we have this strap. So this was an existing gift from my mom, this Louis Neverfull bag. And then I realized that I wasn't wearing it because I don't like to hold it by the handles. I like shoulder bags. So I researched and I found this company called Dress Up Your Purse and they sell straps that match designer bag colors. So I purchased this one. I think it was like 20 bucks or something like that. It comes with the clips. And now I'm wearing this shoulder bag every day to work. I take it to work every single day. And I just love it because I wasn't getting enough use out of this bag to the point where I was thinking about selling it. But everybody was telling me not to sell it because it appreciates in value. So that was my solution. Lastly, probably the best thing that I purchased in quarter three, and I did a whole review on these in one of my vlogs, is the Pepper bras. So Pepper is a company that makes bras for people who don't have a lot of cleavage, like me, myself, and I. So I purchased two bras from them. This is like their signature bra. It's got a little bit of underwire, but it's not uncomfortable at all. So what you do is you take your measurements. It's very easy. And then you just put it in the system. It'll tell you exactly what size you need to get. So I was a 36 double A and they don't sell that anywhere in store or online because I have a, an exceptionally wide rib cage and shoulders, but these things are very small. So the combination of those two just doesn't exist in the real world. So this is where Pepper comes in and they go all the way up to, I think a C cup. So even if you're like medium and you have a C cup, it works for you. So I really love that. And then I also got this one. This is like more of a comfortable style. It doesn't have any wiring and this comes in small, medium and large. I got a medium again because I have a wider rib cage and I just love it. I love it so much. I am never going to be purchasing another bra ever again. Um, and again, they have multiple colors that match large varieties of skin tones. This is the one that matched me the most. Cannot recommend this enough. And two is enough for me because I normally wear sports bras anyway. So on occasions where I do wanna wear a nicer bra, I have two things to choose from. Oh, and also like the main thing is that there's no gapping. So when you put the bra on, if you're in the itty bitty titty committee like me, you know that other bras would have a gap, like a huge gap here. It's not flattering. People can see in it. If you're wearing like a V-neck, people can see. You guys know, if you know, you know, but this has no gaps, no gaps, because it's literally fitted to your body. Enough about that. So those were the best purchases. Not quite many, but the ones that really made a difference in my life. So let's go ahead and go over the books that I've been reading in quarter three. The first one that I read was Things We Never Got Over by Lucy Score. And by the way, all these books, except for one of them, is on Kindle Unlimited. I do sign up for that, so I pay like $15 a month. So Things We Never Got Over was a great book. A quick, fun, lighthearted. I mean, it wasn't lighthearted. It was like a romance. I would rate it a 3.9 out of five. The only reason is is because it wasn't very complex. It was a really good read, but there wasn't like plot twist or any like super juicy drama. It was just a great romance novel. So next I read The Housemaid. It's a thriller. This was a great book. I would also rate it probably a 3.9, almost a four. The only reason is because there's nothing complex about it. It's a basic thriller. And yeah, it was a fun, easy read. To get a five in my book, you need to blow me away. Like even Verity, which is the next one, I wouldn't rate it a five because that I wasn't really stunned at the end. I, I need to be stunned. I need to be shook. I need to be thinking about it for the next week for it to get a five in my book. I would give Verity a, th a 4.3. Great book. That, that's by Colleen Hoover. Definitely a little bit spooky. So I would, I would read that book. If you like books, I would read that book. <laughs> 
what am I saying? <laughs> I have like no word. I don't know how to describe books. Okay. The next one I read was Heart Bones by Colleen Hoover. I think this is the one where basically resembled the show The Summer I Turned Pretty. It's like a high school romance on the beach, summer vibes, very cute, fun, quick read. Uh, I would rate that a four out of five. Okay, the next one is kind of controversial. This one is called Too Late by Colleen Hoover. I would rate this a 4.8 out of five, but there's a caveat, it's got a lot of graphic violence. I don't think it's one of her more popular books. I, it's on Kindle Unlimited, so that's why I read it. It's very juicy, like I could not put the book down, but on the same token, trigger warning, because there's a lot of violence and things like that, so I would not read that if you are sensitive to that. Next, I read The Inmate by Frida McFadden. It was a good, fun thriller to read. Quick read, easy, uh, a little bit predictable, but not too bad. Uh, but again, I would rate it like a 3.9 if you want like a one day read. And the one that I just finished recently is called Every Last Secret by A.R. Tor. This I loved because I love the rich housewife drama, okay? I love books that are set in like suburban neighborhoods and it's like women against women like doing, I don't know, some type of thriller or some type of action drama love story. I love that. So I would rate that a 4.6, 4 4.6 out of 5. Definitely recommend. As far as shows, honestly, I've been disappointed. I've been really disappointed in the shows that are available in quarter three. And that's probably be, probably because I've watched all of the good ones already. So I literally have no shows to recommend. I've been in such a dry spell with my shows. But going into quarter four, we have some great shows lined up. Obviously, you guys know The Handmaid's Tale just came out. I'm kind of upset because I have to wait a week to see the next episode. So I've already watched the first two episodes because I think they released two at the beginning. And we also started recently watching Bloodline. This has been a show I've been trying to get into for years. Couldn't get into it, giving it another shot. I'm on like the third or fourth episode. It's not great, like to be honest, but I'm so desperate to have a show that I'm going to push through. Yeah, let me know in the comments what shows you're watching. I've probably already seen it, but just in case I haven't, I need to read all of your suggestions because I need to find a show. Okay, is that it everybody? All right, so let's just quickly go over some big things that happened in quarter three, life things. So we went to North Carolina. That was a fun last minute trip. AJ's never been, so that was really nice to see the mountains. I came back and shortly after I got my wisdom teeth removed, that was very not pleasant. You can go ahead and watch that vlog. That was a whole thing. And then shortly after that, I got COVID. AJ and I got COVID again for the second time. So that was not fun. Recently, we just celebrated our three year anniversary. So I have a whole video talking about everything I've learned in three years and answering you guys' questions. So it's been a pretty rough quarter. I'm not gonna lie. It was probably the toughest quarter that I've been through like mentally and emotionally this year and I think also because we're trying to conceive and it's not being successful so far like that's also been a huge factor but also like getting COVID and just kind of being thrown off our routine. It's been tough so yeah looking forward to a better quarter for mentally, emotionally, physically. That is basically it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed. Let me know in the comments, what are your goals to finish the year strong? So let's motivate each other. Don't forget to check out Cleo. Honestly, I'm so excited to use that throughout the end of this year and I will report back all of my savings. That's it guys. So follow me on Instagram and I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye.